and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 708, insert into circular linked list. Before we get into the question, you guys know the drill, please subscribe to the channel, it really helps me grow. All right, given a circular linked list node, which is sorted in non-decreasing order, write a function to insert a value insert val into the list such that it remains in a sorted circular list. The given node can be a reference to any single node in the list and may not necessarily be the smallest value in the circular list. If there are multiple suitable places for insertion, you may choose any place to insert the new value. After the insertion, the, certi the, circular, certid <laughs> the circular list should remain sorted. If the list is empty, i.e. the given node is null, you should create a new singular a new singular circular list, geez, try saying that five times, and return the reference to that single node. Otherwise, you should return the originally given node. All right, let's look at a very basic example. We're given this node, uh, which is, you know, one, three, and four, and we're told that the head, uh, the node that we're given is this four here, and we want to insert uh, the value two. So obviously, in order to maintain the, you know, sorted order, the circular um, insertion should happen here and that way it's going to remain sorted so now we'd have something like 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 and we maintain our you know sorted circular array here so and you know this is still the head so relatively simple I mean if we're looking at a kind of diagram it's very easy to figure out where to put this but there are a few edge cases that we need to consider so in order to do that, I'm actually going to wipe away a lot of this text to give us some more space to work with. And we'll talk about all the possible insertions and how we can navigate them. And then we will go to the code editor and write the code. This question is not that complicated. All right, let's think about all the possible ways that we can insert this node. So we read the question prompt and I told you that there's a few cases that we need to consider and let's kind of enumerate them now. The first case and is going to be the most simple case where the head that we're given uh, is null, right? So in the case that head is null, all we have to do is just create a new node. Uh, you know, we'll just create a new node and then return that, right? That's our answer, right? We just have to create it and then link it to itself, right? So we kind of have like a cycle here in the node itself. That's the most simple case, easy peasy, right? The second case, is that uh, we insert somewhere inside of it, right? Insert into the linked list. So, you know, this, if we go back to our example where we had one, um, and then I think it was like three, and then four, right? We had the linked list like this, and we were asked to insert two, right? So we would insert it basically between one and two. So we basically find the point where it would go into, and you know this is basically just going to be a point where you know we have a gap here that we can insert it into so that's you know the, the second case where we basically found a point where the previous value in the linked list is less than the insertion value uh, and it's also less than the next value in the linked list right so in this case uh, you know, if we were at three, or I guess it would be the current value, sorry, because there is no next one. So, you know, if we're at the node three, and then we'd say, okay, what was the previous value? It was one, and two can slot in there, so we can insert it. And there we go, that's fine. So that's the second one. And then the third case is going to be one of the more complicated cases, uh, and kind of let's redraw our, um, you know, diagram here. And we have these three nodes and it's linked like this, right? And in the more complicated case, the insertion is gonna happen at the end, right? So if we're asked to insert the nine, then we would have to insert it, you know, between the one and the four. So we need to account for that because if we're just looking for a case like this, we're gonna miss it, right? This is the easy insertion, but what happens when it happens at the edge, right? Or if we wanna insert zero into here, right? It would still happen between the four and the one, but we can't look for this check here. So we need to check whether or not we're actually at the end. And remember, since the list is given to a sorted, we know we're at the end because our current value compared to the next value will always be greater, right? That's the point where our linked list drops off and becomes circular, right? So the one is basically the smallest element 
and the four is the greatest element when we see that drop off so basically the curve value is greater than the next value in the linked list then we know that we've actually hit the end and now we've wrapped around to the smallest value and our current value is actually the largest one so in the case where we wanted to insert the nine we would have to say okay four points to the nine and then all the nine points to the one or in the opposite case the same way we could point to the zero which now points to the one uh, and then you know continuing onwards uh, for both cases so those are your three cases so this is um, edge insertion uh, edge insertion so those are the three cases that we want to take care of right the first is that the head is actually um, no the the second one is just like a standard insertion into the linked list this is really easy we just look for a point where the previous value is less than the insertion value which is less than whatever our current nodes value is that one's also quite easy the third case is going to be the edge insertion um, and you know that one's a little bit more complicated because we have to identify where the edge actually is uh, that we start wrapping around and actually I just realized there's a fourth case where the entire uh, circular linked list is actually the same value so if we want to do like three three uh, three then we have to be a little bit careful here and figure out where to actually insert the value in this case um, it shouldn't really matter uh, if the entire thing is actually the same um, then we can insert it wherever we want and we will maintain our sorted order so this is going to be a uni value uh, linked list right where all the elements are the same it doesn't matter so if we're asked to insert two we could insert it here and that would be fine we could insert it here that could be fine it doesn't matter uh, wherever we insert it we will maintain our uh, sorted order so we don't have to worry about if it's uni value we can just put that element wherever we want okay so those are our four cases and this is really what this question is um, kind of boiling down to can you identify these four cases and handle them in your code uh, otherwise, it's actually really straightforward once you figure out these four cases and how to handle them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the code editor and type this up. It's only about, I don't know, 25 lines of code, not too complex. The logic is pretty easy to follow. So I will see you back in the code editor and we will type this up together. All right, let's go. We're in the code editor. Let's write this up. Remember that the first case that we need to take care of is that this head given to us is actually null. If it's null, then we need to create the node and actually link it to itself. So let's do that. So we're going to say if not head, we're going to say the new head is going to equal to node of whatever the insert value is. And now we need to link that head to itself because remember the link list needs to be circular. So we're going to say new head dot next equals to new head so we've made it uh, circular and at this point we are done we can simply return the new head all right cool now what we want to do is actually go through our linked list so typically when we go through our linked list uh, we have some sort of sentinel value uh, and in this case we need that because we actually need to figure out when we've made one for a rotation right if we do a while loop and go to the end of our linked list well it's circular so we're just going to be iterating forever we need to actually figure out when we've done one full rotation so to do that we're actually going to create a copy of our head and just point it equal to cur and we'll use cur to actually iterate through our uh, linked list here and when the value of cur actually equals to head then we know that we have actually done our full rotation and we can stop there otherwise we're just going to go in circles for all eternity so we're going to say while cur dot next does not equal to head so while we haven't completed our full iteration through the linked list we need to do some work here so the first case we want to take care of is the actual insertion right uh, and this is the standard insertion so say we had the values like one and three and we were asked to insert two uh, we would basically need to check for this simple case so what we're going to do is we're going to say if cur dot val is less than or equal to insert val which is less than or equal to cur dot next dot val then we can actually insert the value between cur and cur dot next so we need to create the new node that we're going to insert and we're going to say it's going to be a node with value insert val and its next value is going to be whatever the next node is cur dot next and now we need to actually uh, update the current node uh, it's next right because it's next value is pointing to whatever cur dot next is but we need it to be pointing to this new node now that we've created it and we're going to be inserting it there so we're going to say cur dot next equals to new node 
And at this point, we've completed our insertion, so we can simply return the head, which is remember what they're actually looking for. All right, now we have the other case where we need to handle what happens at the edge of our um, linked list and whether or not we need to insert something there. So remember that we know that we're at the edge if the current value of our node is actually greater than cur.next.val, right? Because it's circular, therefore, when we hit the end of it, the next node is going to be the smallest node. And since it's in sorted order, if we ever get to a point where a current node's value is greater than the next node, that means that we've hit that cliff and we've gone over it. So we have basically gone back to the beginning. So we do that by checking whether or not the current value is greater than the next value. And if it is, then we need to check whether or not we need to insert at the end. So we're going to say if insert val is actually greater than or equal to cur.val, um, which implies that we want to insert it at the very end uh, for the case that our insert value is actually greater than the last element or the greatest one that we have, or uh, the case where insert val is actually less than the smallest element that's currently present in our linked list. So we're going to say cur, cur val. So in either of these cases, we want to insert our new node at the end. And doing this is going to be the same process as we just did above. We're going to say new node equals to node uh, and it's going to have a value of insert val and its next value is going to be whatever cur.next is and again we need to set cur.next now to be new node and uh, at this point we just want to return the head cool so if neither of these uh, statements fires here whoops i think this actually needs to be indented yeah there we go okay cool um if neither of these uh triggers then well even if they trigger uh, actually, no, we, we would return head here. So if neither of them trigger, we need to move on to the next element in our uh, linked list. So we're going to say cur equals to cur.next, and we're going to move our iteration forward. All right. So either we're going to return in here or we're not. And what it means if we haven't returned anything in the actual uh, process of our while loop is case number four, in which case all of the values in our um, linked lists are actually the same. In this case, we can literally insert that new node anywhere and we'll maintain our sorted order because the entire thing is uni value, right? So it doesn't matter if we have all threes and we're asked to insert a two, we can put it here, we can put it here, we can put it, you know, here, we can put it here, it doesn't matter. Um, because that will basically be the new smallest element and it's going to be fine. So if it's all the same value, we can insert that node anywhere, which is what we're going to do now. Uh, okay, so let's make sure I'm indented correctly here. And we're going to again say new node is going to be node of insert val. And then we're going to set the next one as cur.next. And remember that cur.next now equals to new node. And then all we have to do is just return our head here. So <clears throat> let us um, run this, make sure I didn't make any syntax errors. There was an issue with the indenting, so there might be a chance for us. Okay, it looks fine. Let me submit this and we are good to go. So what is the time and space complexity of this algorithm? So the time complexity, in the worst case, we have to go through the entire uh, linked list here, right? Because in the worst case, it's going to have all the same elements which means that we're going to have to make one full loop through the entirety of the linked list. So because of this, it's going to be big O of n, where n is the size of the linked list, right? For space complexity wise, uh, we don't actually use any space here. All we're doing is inserting a new node and we're not actually, you know, using any sort of data structures. So it's going to be a big O of one uh, space allocation here. So that is how you solve this question insert into a sorted linked list this question is really not that complicated like i said what the interviewers are really looking for here is whether or not you can identify uh, and explain those four cases and remember the four cases are one that the head is null what do you do in that case the second case is that you have one of these easy insertions where you just insert it between two values the next two cases are how you deal with insertions at the edge. So basically when the, the, the list loops around again because it's circular. And the last case is how you deal with the fact that the 
um, linked list actually has uni values. So it's all the same values. And that one is probably the most uh, tricky one to catch. But luckily, now that you've watched this video, you know all four cases. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling here because you've seen that the solution works. We've talked about the time and space complexity. There's nothing more for me to say other than if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and a comment. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss uploads. And otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.